We're back. We are back. Here we go. Um, I'd just like to point out as well, because I had this from a client before. Um, we don't turn up and film this in the same clothes every yeah, time. Yeah. It's 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 it's, same it's all filmed on the same day. Yeah, imagine just yeah. imagine these these uh, what the what fifteen minutes or something like yeah, that. Aren't they? Imagine come, uh, driving down for yeah, fifteen minutes. Yeah, and the chairs are in exactly the same place. Same place yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then, and then going thing. back home for a week and yeah. then coming back and filming it yeah. again in the same. So so that's a shout out to you, George. Don't worry, mate. It's yeah. all on the same day. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you'll know when we're filming them by our tops. Yeah. We could yeah. spice it up and throw some stuff around. Should we just switch shirts every yeah, 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 I'll yeah. be there in like a that, baggy gown and Mike's there skin tight like that. That'll confuse him. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, yeah. welcome back. Thank you very much for, for watching, obviously. We're uh, done a mic. I hope, I hope that. lots of people are watching. Yeah, I hope lots of people are watching. And tell everybody about tell it. Tell everyone about it. Yeah. yeah. Don't, Opposite Stephen Barton. Yeah, don't keep it quiet. Share yeah. it with everyone. Yeah, um, yeah we're done a mic from Bison's Banner. Um, we help online coaches get in the shape of their lives, get the business in the shape of their lives and have fun while doing it. Just made up on the spot. Sounds pretty good. There you go. We're wrong with it. It's kind of what we do. It's just what it is, isn't it? No. So in this episode, we're going to talk about um, why it's likely that you're an online coach and your Instagram bio is shit. Oh, dreadful. The amount of these we see are dreadful. And look, okay, it's not your fault. It's not your fault because it's quite a hard thing and it's quite a hard thing to understand, I think, from that point of view. And I'm just going to say it as well now. At time of recording, our Instagram bios are shit. Yeah. As well. Like, I just want to say that out loud. They're not shit. They could be better. It could be a lot. It could better. be better. Yeah, could, could be, be a lot better. better. But most people's we see are worse than ours, so we're okay. We can talk about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think everybody needs to change it to I help busy professionals. Um, yeah. Feel more confident uh, without giving up the food the, they love. The food they love. Yeah. Every, every. <laughs> How many people watching this? How many people watch that? Or the other one is I help. Uh, the other one is I help females um, regain control without restricting food and loving themselves. Okay. That's cool. another one, isn't it? They're cool. the two. There They're the go. two we see. That's it. So the reason why those are crap is because if we can just say it out loud now, <laughs> that must that must we've obviously got that knowledge from experience of seeing X amount of people say the same thing, right? Mm. So if X amount of people are saying the same thing, you're in the same category as X amount of people. And that's the worst thing that you can do for your marketing. Mm. Your marketing needs to put you above or separate um, from other people mm. um, because otherwise you're just going to be then a comparison to those people you are a generic online coach that helps busy professionals everyone everyone's busy everyone's professional it's yeah. fine and everybody does want to get in shape without giving the foods up their love so well yeah. done on niching down to yeah, everybody niche down um, so yeah shout out to uh, Simon Mitchell obviously as well for this we've um, we spoke with him at length about this sort of stuff yeah um, and one of our trainings inside our one to one stuff is about this this topic and and I think it's important because when we get into this, we assume that our Instagram bio needs to be something that people are going to look at all the time and it's like they need to be reminded who we are and and the one thing that you'll soon learn is that you never look at someone's Instagram bio more than once really uh, when do you ever go to it and look at it at depth you don't you look at it the first time you land on their page um, and with the way that Instagram works nowadays, you want to kind of create that first impression straight away because you have a limited attention span. People do have limited attention spans. And, you know, let's say someone stumbles across one of your reels and they go onto your page and the reel is about something that's quite niche specific. And then they get to your profile and it just says online fat loss coach. I help busy professionals lose weight. On it. And they're going to go, okay, I've heard that before. Brilliant. That's what everyone else does. Um, and I think that there are a lot of people around who, who really do niche down very, very well. Um, and they're frightened to do it. Uh, and the re initially anyway and the reason that people get frightened to do it is they feel like they're going to alienate people um, and that's good <laughs> you want to alienate people because you can't help everyone you may think you can you may feel like you want to help everyone but you will talk to no one along the way and just because we've niched down doesn't mean that we don't get people outside our niche coming to work with us because people worry about that they think oh I d am I just going to get those people who, are, who to work with me and it's like no you're not just going to get those people that work with you you might get the majority of them that work with you but the way you say things, the way you word things, the way you are as your personality type, you will attract other people outside of that niche who resonate with you as a person. Um, and people are just so afraid to do it, aren't they? People are just, people feel like they're going to alien. I just, they hate it. So, I, and I ask them that question and go, okay, well, how many people have you got in at the moment? Well, not that many. Yeah. So do you think it's working? <laughs> do you think it's working? Like, so the way that I think people act like there's only 30 people available online. Like, and it's like, oh shit, I don't want to put any of them off. Mm. Any of them is millions of people on the internet. There's millions of people. So even if you went really niche, and the way that I've, I've said this before is about like, um, like nose surgery, haven't I? I've said, if you're, if you're looking for nose surgery, you have got two surgeons. One of them is a general surgeon. He does nose, boobs, fucking, I don't know, penis enlargement. Yeah. 
probably should be booking in. Yeah, booking you got his number. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've still got it from last time. But, <laughs> yeah. um, but let's just say he does lo- loads, of, loads of surgery. Big toe loads reduction of, loads surgery. Of, loads of, loads of, yeah, loads of different <laughs> ones, right? Loads of different ones. And then you've got this other one. I specialise in no surgery. Nose, 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 nose. Let's just say you're going to have no surgery. Which one are you more likely to go and pick? Well, it the depends if I get the penis with it as well. Yeah, as, oh, might go that one. Yeah. Throw that in as well. <laughs> yeah, you get two um, for one. Two for one, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, please. Um, that's the one you're going to go with. Yeah. Yet the nose surgeon wouldn't be sat there going, but what if I put people off having um, boob surgery with me? Because th- mm. I think there's people that, dispe- that do kind of do a few things. Um, but they're not going to think like that, and it's the same as yourself. It's like, but I don't want to put. I don't want to put. I work with guys because I've got women that might want to work with me, right? Okay, then they will still work with you. But what you're doing is you're being so vanilla. You're you're dampening down your mm. the volume of your marketing because you should be speaking to a certain type of individual because that page almost needs to to smack somebody in the face about who you are what you stand for, what you don't stand for, what you like, what you don't like, your personality, who you work with, why you work with them, how you get that particular person a result. I've got a client who's done this very, very well, and he is a dentist, and um, he's currently transitioning to be an online coach. Imagine that, we live in a world where people are transitioning from being a dentist to an online coach. Imagine that. But anyway, and in his bio, he's got... The go-to guy to uh, to help doctors, dentists, and accountants um, to get insurance. Lawyers, isn't it? Uh, or lawyers, or whatever it is. Yeah, it's it's a Some professional part. thing, but yeah. it's you know it's really direct niche. And um, I've walked I've walked the path, and and I can help you too, or whatever it is, something like that. And um, he came to me with five clients, where I believe about five weeks in, he sat at fifteen, all doctors, all dentists. Um, and it's who he wants to work with because he's one. He knows their pain points very, very well. And if you were a doctor or a dentist or a lawyer, accountant, whatever it is, that finds his page, right? Let's just put your mind into the person that finds his page. And that page is saying, I help people just like you get in shape. You're going to go with that guy. If you're a doctor, dentist, and you've landed on his page, you're going to go with him because he talks about what to do if you sat down all day in the surgery, what to do you know, if you're getting out for drinks, what to do if you've got a heavy workload, everything that is niche-specific, but by the way, also is applicable to pretty much everybody. Don't forget that. But he's niched down so much that he's then attracting a certain type of audience. And then that type of audience is then talking about him and referring other people that are the same. That's what you need to do. And it might not necessarily be as specific as a profession, but it needs to be a certain type of person. Like, we know our demographic. Dan, you could reel it off now, right? Yeah. And the other thing as well with that, the Instagram bio on ours isn't as strong because I think our content really does it, it, does it for us in a way with our niche stuff. And like, I think with, with you watching this, you're watching this for a reason. You're here for a reason. And it's sub- probably because of our morals and our ethics and our values around this type of stuff that we're talking about. There'll be other people out there who say otherwise, you say different ways of doing it, but you're not watching their stuff because you realize that the way they do things doesn't align with your values, right? And I think that's the key thing here is it's also about people will resonate with that content better because they're the right type of person for that. So with our content, like I said, there's a reason you're here watching it. It's a reason the way that we are the way we are. We're a bit jovial. We take the piss. We have a bit of fun with it. Whereas there are other people out there who do similar things who are very, very serious. And I would hazard a guess that you're someone who doesn't want to take this massively seriously. You want to have a bit of fun with it. Yes, we talked you know, in other videos about having a business and actually putting the work in, but there's probably a part of this that you want to be having fun. You want to enjoy what you're doing. And I think that with social media, it should be fun and it should come across I that think, way. I think that is the human element of it though. I think that's where we attract more people is that we come across as normal, because we are, guys that are relatable that have been through the same things that other people have been through right Mm. and we give honest opinions and we don't sell and we're not full of bullshit and also i think because we put that first so i think there's probably other mentors out there who maybe are you know not putting their personality out there but they they go with the money do you Mm. know what i mean they go with the money first and they attract people whose values are money first Mm -hmm. whereas we're trying to attract people who go with well no decent human being gives a shit about people first then secondary is like right well obviously you want to make money right and obviously that's why we're here that's why we do what we do but that's why we don't post stripe screenshots why we don't talk about how much revenue we make or how much revenue our clients make right we want to get them great lives we want to do all that sort of stuff for them but we want to do it the right way and how we've done it and i think that's the key thing you're here for a reason like i said because of those values and because of those things that we put at the front and center of our 
our Instagram. So like our first line on Instagram bio is the anti-fitness fitness guys, right? So if you're someone who hates the fitness industry because of everything it stands for, you're probably going to like us. That's going to hook you in straight away because it's a bit different. No one's put that in their bio yet. I'm sure everyone else copy it now. We'll make you laugh. We'll make you laugh first. We'll get you in shape. We'll, that's the first thing. We'll make you laugh. We'll get you in shape. We'll, we'll help, help your business. business, right? And it's done in that order. And again, people think, oh, it's just because just you've written in that order. No, it's done that way for a reason. That we want the we'll make you laugh first because that's the primary thing that we believe for us is one of our things. I don't want to work with someone who has no sense of humor. I couldn't think of anything worse in my life. It'd be boring. Well, Mike ours, works with me, to be fair. So, you know. <laughs> ours does what it says on the tin, right? Just the same as our brand name, Biceps and Banter. Again, it's not fucking whatever fitness or whatever it's it, yeah. it does what it says on the tin same as our bio and then it's congruent with the message that we're putting out it's congruent with the spoof videos that we do congruent with the the, the fact that we swear that we are real down to earth and things like that and why this relates to you is that that's what you need to be for your clients because when we have had clients come to us let's say gen pop for nutrition and training they're not in the market for an online coach they're in the market to work with me or mm-hmm. they're in the market to work with dan they want to work with Dan or they want to work with me. So when you got on a consultation call, you know that it's just a formality of dotting the I's, crossing the T's, that's it. Because this person has bought into you because they like you, they know you, they trust you, they resonate you with you. And you need to do that for your clients. So you need to make it that people that people who come to you don't just want an online coach, that they want you. Mm. And how do you think that that's going to be achievable? It's by being so niche specific and being um, ruthless with your message and not deviating from that. There's so much wishy-washy because you're looking at other people's stuff. You're looking at other coaches' content and going, should I post that and should I do this or that's a good idea or or you're influenced by what other coaches might think. And it's like, well, no, just be niche specific. Hit people when they first land on your page. Like Dan said, when when someone first lands on your page, that's pretty much the only time they're ever, ever, ever going to read your bio. So by the way, take that link out that says, apply to work with me. Because no one's going to. Because nobody is going to land on your page. That's another huge mistake. It's like, that should be the free thing that you give away that is, again, specific to that niche. And it should be very, very specific, very, very obvious what it is. Free thing. You know, I get why people have link trees and stuff. We've got one, you know, that sort of stuff. You've got more than one thing. But for most people, it should just be a direct link to that free thing. Yeah. Because no one's going to book in for a call with you for coaching Correct. because they should be in your messages. You should be messaging regularly and they'll DM you. But you might, you might say, but I have people that come through my inquiry form, but I bet you direct them there. I bet you yeah. say, inquire f- through the link in my bio, which means that you're having to say it for them to go there. They're not going there organically. You're mm-hmm. saying it. So you can say, go somewhere else instead. You can say, well, DM me instead, which is arguably quicker because a DM as a response to your story is quicker than going onto yeah. your page to click the link in your bio, to look through your link th- tree, to click that, to go through a calendar link or, a, or a, um, an inquiry form. So that needs to, to come out because like Dan said there, that's only going to get read when somebody is either directed there, just cover that, or it's the first time on the page. And you are not going to get people who land the first time on your page go, I want to work with this guy. And if you do, they are not the right client because they've made a knee-jerk reaction and they don't necessarily want to work with you. They want to work with or think they want to work with a generic online coach. And, and, and I guarantee they'll be the worst type of client because they haven't followed you. They don't know you, your personality type, how you do check-ins, how you go through the process of helping a client because they've not seen any of your social proof and any of your content. They've not absorbed any of that sort of stuff. So from that point of view, like we talked about this before at length, like where we know people with followings that are quite large, much bigger than ours. And I can, and we know that they don't, yeah, yeah, it's not hard, is it? Um, They don't make anywhere near the revenue that we might make, but also they find it very, very difficult to monetize that following. Followers aren't actually that useful. I would take, I would rather have a thousand followers on an extremely niche profile of Instagram than 10,000. If you just said to me, you can have 10,000 random people follow your Instagram tomorrow or a thousand that are exactly on your niche, thousand every time, mm-hmm. every single time. Mm-hmm. Uh, yet people out there, it's like a popularity contest. They want the 10,000, they want the 20, whatever it is. Take a hundred thousand randomers actually. I'll still take the thousand. Because you know who you can help, you know you speak to them. And I think when you put it in those terms, all of a sudden it start, you start thinking, well, actually, maybe I should niche down. Maybe I should change my bio. Maybe I should be more like that. Because, again, people are worried about how many followers they get and how many new followers they get. And, again, if you're trying to get 10 followers a week, right, and you've just got online fat loss coach, I help people lose weight eating the foods they love, great. You're going to get 10 people follow you and they're, they're going to be shit. If you have a very, very specific bio and you get two people follow you a week, yeah. Much, much better. You're stuck People in are the so arts. obsessed with followers and it's not about that. It's about the quality of that person that's coming on your page. If you niche down with your bio and you make the, your content talk to a specific person 
what you're doing is for every 10 new followers that you get, you're increasing the percentage of out of those 10 new followers that they should be your niche because you will be excluding people who would follow you otherwise but wouldn't necessarily buy. So at the moment, you might get two out of 10, for example, that might be your specific niche. Watered down version of kind of like a, a good audience, essentially. Whereas if you you get better at your content, niching down, have a better, more engaging bio that speaks to somebody that maybe offers them something for free rather than saying, fucking apply to work with me, get that out. Um, then you're going to increase that. Not to 100%, it won't be 100%, but it will increase it. And all you're doing is stacking the odds in your favor that the more uh, that the, the more people within your audience mm-hmm. f- are following you for the right reasons. And I'll get a lot of people who come in honest to god like i've had i've had i've got coaches clients who are like yeah my following's not not gone up by by much this this uh this week and it's like you've got three thousand followers why do you want your following to go up mm. like you've got three thousand people and you've got 10 clients so does that mean you're going to need to build your audience to six to six thousand to get another 10 clients you're going to need another mm. three thousand people to get 10 clients no get more of the right audience in and you learn how to monetize one that you have. It's, it's not the problem. People think it's about their followers. They think it's not. Like, we've established this before so many times. It's not about the number of followers you've got. Again, like, we don't have big followings. We just don't. And, and the other thing, the reason that people don't have the free thing in their bio, by the way, is because they don't have an email list, yeah. which is another thing entirely, which we'll talk about on another video. Um, but it, it really baffles me, like you said, that people go, oh, I need more followers, I need more followers. No, you don't. You really, you can't talk to the ones you've got. Don't don't waste those new followers. You need to get better at speaking to yeah. people first and communicating your message. Then it's worth getting more followers. But at the moment, you're just attracting people to a fucking empty, yeah. empty pit of nothingness. It's like, the, there's, no, there's no point. You might as well actually fill it with something. And I think the other thing that I say to people all the time with their following and they worry about how many followers they've got and all this sort of stuff. I say, if you were stood on a stage and they were all stood in front of you, you would absolutely shit your pants. There is more than enough people there. Mm-hmm. more than enough people there. Um, it's about making sure that you, you have the right message and you speak to them. Like, and, and we can't say it enough. And I think people kind of probably think, oh yeah, it's easy for you to say, it's easy for you to say. But it's like, but we we've don't cultivated be- it over, over years. Over years. Over years of doing it right. And we always look at our insights. And this is another thing that you need to be doing. And when you look at your insights on Instagram, you look at your followers, you look at whether they're, you know, you get follows and unfollows, right? And I've had months and, and in a row where my account numbers have stayed the same but I've had 400 people unfollow me and 400 people follow me. That's brilliant. That's what you want. Mm -hmm. You want people going, no, I don't like this guy. Or I want people, oh oh, yeah, I follow this guy. If someone starts following me and two months in unfollows me, that's good. I Mm -hmm. I would rather that than they stuck around and just follow me for no reason. Because the number, the number at the following is just vanity number. Move away from that vanity number. It means fuck all. It doesn't add anything to your income. Move away from the vanity numbers of the number of likes. I would rather somebody get six likes on a post. I'm not shitting you. Six likes where all six people, it really was so specific and hit them because those six people have got more of a chance of signing up than if you get 600 pictures of likes, uh, 600 likes on a picture of abs or glutes because that means fuck all. So three years ago, Mike, how, if you got 10 new followers, three, month, uh, three years ago, sorry, how many of them would have been fitness professionals? Um, barely any. Yeah. And now when you get 10 followers now, how eight. many of them are? Eight. And it, that's the thing is like, so we're attracting people now who are fitting with our niche, people we want to speak to, people we want to watch these videos with. I don't think a lot of my clients who are still coaching with me for fat loss and stuff watch these. They probably don't watch them. They may do. Hello, if you are watching. Um, but you probably don't. And that's for this reason is that's why we've also put this on YouTube is because we know coaches spend more time on YouTube. They spend more time watching stuff. They're more likely to sit and watch a 15 minute video. General fat loss clients probably aren't going to sit and watch a 15 minute educational video about fat loss. That's why if you look at our YouTube channel, we never sat here doing this when we were talking about fat loss. It was niche specific. This is for you as an online coach yeah. who, do, who do watch Stephen Bartlett, who do sit down and listen to podcasts, who do want advice about their nutrition training. When it was fat loss, it was more jovial. It was out more and about. Vloggy, more, we yeah. Need to, yeah, we need to make cuts to keep people interested. Mm-hmm. That, was, that was for then. Again, there's thought behind everything. So, it's, and, and, it's, and I think sometimes it looks like we're just pissed around and it looks like we don't know what we're doing. And that's kind of true, but it's also kind of made that way we want it to come across that way a little bit because we know we're not going to get thousands of views on these videos we don't want them to before we were trying to get a thousand views on a video because yeah we needed more people to see it because there's more people interested in fat loss and stuff like that but with this we don't we know that if 400 people watch this we know it's going to be online coaches watching it mm-hmm. 
There's gonna be someone there watching this now going, I'm not an online I'm coach. Online They're coach. gonna comment. They're gonna comment and go, yeah, I'm not an online coach. Okay. But you see the point we're trying to make here is that you can transition your niche, you can change it, you can do all these sorts of things. Once you become accustomed to niching down and knowing who you wanna to speak to and knowing who you wanna work with, you can do it. And I think that the only people who are afraid of not niching down are those that don't already have a successful business. Yeah. And I think that baffles me is when I look at it and I go, you know those people that you look at and go, oh, they niche down and they're really, really specific. And you look at them and you go, well, they've got a thriving business. And every single person I know who has a thriving business has got a niche. Like, and I can pinpoint it and you can look you, at it and go, I you, know who they work with. You, you watching this have done it. Like you watching this have done it. If you had a, a, a business mentor, right? And it was any business. It was e-commerce. It was whatever. That, running a shop, right? But they knew general, general business. Or you have... I help fitness business owners do X, Y, and Z, right? Which one are you going to go with? Mm. You're going to go with the one who goes, oh, oh, okay, well, he specializes in fitness business, so I'm going to go with that one. Do that. <laughs> do yeah. that for your own business. And, and people look at it and they go, oh, who, but how do I niche down? That's the other one we get, right? Is, oh, I don't know who to pick or what to do. The easiest person to niche down and talk to on your Instagram bio is you from about two or three years ago. The things that you struggled with before you got into this, before you did all this sort of stuff. The easiest person in the world is, is that, that's the person that you should, you should niche down and focus on. And think about that Instagram bio and think what would have piqued your attention? Yeah. What would have got you interested in that sort of stuff? That's a good place to start. Um, but it, it just, it just blows my mind that people are so afraid to do it, but yet what they're doing isn't working. So the first time that someone lands on, the, on your page, you should have a name that's not got dots and dashes. That's the other thing. I, that's the other thing I noticed from mate. a few online coaches that follow mental. me. I can't even tell what the name is. Mental. How, how have you not got your name mental. on there? <laughs> it's mental. I don't get it. It's, it's men, I, I can't believe it. I see it and I'm like, what the fuck? It, what are you doing? Like, oh. There's no name. Like... Think about what you're doing. Think about what your brand is. Think, put your name on it, like the actual tag. So, Mike Biceps Banter, Dan Biceps Banter. Okay, get a good gist of what that is from from our handle, and then Mike Harrison, online coaches coach. Dan Meek, online coaches coach. Again, same thing, niche specific. Oh, but what happens if Gen Pop wants to sign up and do a, a photo shoot? Cool, I, they will do, and they will do, and I have had that since yeah. we started niching down. Like, yeah. cool, they will do. Make sure your picture is half decent. Like, and then make sure that what that says in those next three lines is talking to somebody. And that's it. That's all you need to do. Yeah. Like, make it clear and concise and tidy. And, like, it. And some of it just looks a mess. And take this out as well. Get If this is in your bio, PT at something gym. Why the fuck is yeah. that in there? You're using this to market for online clients who aren't probably aren't in your local area. And if you're thinking about I'm using my online presence to market my local area, that's the the most inefficient way to market to your local area. Like mm -hmm. what you're what you should be doing is removing that because that's junk. That's junk information. That's like nobody gives a toss if you're at fucking Pure Gym in Birmingham. No mm -hmm. one cares because who's fucking reading your bio might live in fucking London yep. like so take that out that's a waste of time mm -hmm. just because you're a PT as well doesn't matter they're not interested in that they're interested in the fact that you're an online coach so there you go there you go ranty a, rant, bit, a bit ranty that one wasn't it but, um, but yeah look that, that's where it all starts from and I think um, I think the other thing I would say just to leave you with this is don't just write a bio and then go oh, that'll do write hundreds of them like we do this with our one-to-one -one clients well we do this with one-to-one -one clients right and we say write 10 Start with 10. And we say start start with 10. And what they do is they write 10, they pick out two, and they go, oh, I think those two are good. And we'll sit down and go, okay, yeah, I think those two are good. Now do 10 based on those two. And do iterations of that from there. And what you find is, as with everything, right, the more you do it, the more you practice, the better you get at it. And the more you find the one that's right for you. Don't just write a bio and go, right, that's it, that's done. I'm done. Think about that anymore. They won't do this. They won't. Of course they won't. They won't. Of course you won't. Because you need, look, we need, we need accountability to do it, right? Of course you do. We know that. We know that. And this is, the, this is why we do what we do. So even if you were to join our, our calls, right, and do our one-to-one -one group coaching calls, right, which you can jump on. 49 quid. So. 49 pound a month, by the way. We, you'll see us talking to our one-to-one -one clients and we'll say this sort of stuff to them, but it's in their check-ins. It's in their one-to-one -one accountability where we're like, no, you need to do this. We're not doing the next thing until you do this. All yeah. of a sudden they do it. Yeah. <laughs> Funny that, isn't it? They niche down, they focus on that. Eight weeks down the line, they've got 10 new clients all on that niche. Brilliant, it works. It's, it's not rocket science. It's just you're too scared to do it. You're too scared because you think that it's going to alienate people and you think it can't be right. Go and look at all those people doing really, really well. See, They're doing that. See alienation as a good thing. Exclude people because you will, you will gravitate people towards you. We exclude tons of people in what we do. 
tons. There's probably loads of people that hate us. Cool. But there's also people that love us. And the, the beauty of this is, is that you don't need to sell to a million people. You need a small amount of people in the grand scheme of the internet that, that love you or like you or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's all you need. So go and alienate people. Go and segregate people. Be divisive. Put people off because people will be drawn to you. Anyway. In a good way. Yeah. yeah. There don't, you go. don't segregate in a bad way. So yeah. In a good way. yeah. <laughs> don't be racist. Catch you there. See you later. See you later. <laughs>